winter is a good time of year to have a look at your seed collection and I like to have a look at things that are quite interesting and exotic that you can plant out from seed over winter using simple cold frame technique. Here we have some quince, these are canelames, quince canelames and these have been kept in my fridge so they've been kept at 4 degrees centigrade and also from much earlier on um, in the late summer very early autumn I managed to walk by an old mulberry tree and collected some of the mulberries and the seeds uh, quite small and I basically just kept them in the fridge and they've been drying out but kept cold so now, with it being December, late December, I'm going to have a go at planting some of these out in some simple compost pots. Cover them with a little bit of plastic sheeting is my version of a cold frame. Make sure they don't go mouldy. Now, today I thought I might have a look at these. These are called Nottingham Meddler. And I again found these as fruitful and collected them. And you'll see that quite an unusual even among the medlar variety, the Nottingham medlar is unusual. It's very open fruit, as you can see. And something called bletting is required. When you pick these, you wait till about the first frost. That's probably in November, towards mid-November. Then you're supposed to turn them upside down like this, put them on something dry. People use things like kitchen towel. And leave them to soften. And they, you eat them uh, when they're just about very very soft very close to actually going rotten people describe the taste as being like a cross between a, an apple and a pear puree with sort of hints of sort of grapefruit in them almost so very unusual this will grow as a low bush rather than it will well you could call it a tree if you like but it's one of the smaller varieties of medlar so it's quite compact now the seeds I wash, I split some of these apart, these are very soft, you could pull them apart with your fingers. This is what the seeds look like, and we'll have a look at them under my microscope. To remove the seeds from medlar when it's very soft, all you've got to do is pull the fruit apart, so I'll do that and I'll show you. You might be able to get quite a few seeds out of this, they're quite large. Now if you look closely you can see which, where the seeds are, they're coated in the sort of almost puree like material inside the medlar of the fruit. There's one there, one there, and possibly one underneath there, and there may be a few more underneath. Once you've actually washed and cleaned them, um, and I've had these in the fridge for a while, they turn out like so. And let's have a look and see what they look like under the microscope. So, just by washing this um, medlar out, and it's very late December, you can see from this one we've harvested five of these irregular large seeds not that all of them are viable we don't know that all we do know is that you've got five seeds that you can work with pop them out and see if any seedlings grow um, over the winter and towards the spring as long as they're covered as I said earlier so the Nottingham medlar which is a variety of quince you can also get other quince trees another one's called a quince sedonia I have one of those in my back garden and of course quince canelames which is the one um, which produces these seeds here. The um, here we have them under the microscope stage of a uh, basic USB Bresser microscope. Got hold of this for about six quid from a charity shop. Help the aged. And under times twenty, you can see that the seeds look quite scaly. Here's here they are on XP. And if I just hold that on the screen there and I move this, the seeds around a little bit you can see that they're very ragged and un uneven looking and they're all, they almost seem to be sandwiched together it looks like one of those uh, toasted sandwiches that were popular back in the 80s and very strange seeds and these we know from antiquity that medlar was a popular fruit grown around the Caspian Sea in um, Asia and basically 3,000 years ago and then it came to the ancient Romans and then later on to uh, the Greeks and then across the course to Europe and then the 18th century became more popular 
but it's fallen from favour. It would nice, nice, nice if it came back in because it doesn't look like it's difficult to grow to me, and it's self fertile. Medlars have these strange um, innards to their fruit, and they are self fertile, meaning that both male and female parts um, are present in the same flowers. Some people have said when they've grown medlars that even though they might produce very few flowers that virtually all of the flowers go to fruit. They're very large and very beautiful flowers, and I would agree with that, because my quince sedonia in the back garden, the birds absolutely love it. Presumably the flowers are loaded with nectar, and even the birds have spotted that, that they are edible, and obviously insects like them um, for the nectar, and they produce profuse amounts of pollen. So that might be the reason for the success of meddlers, and quince in general and they grow well in the UK and I know the Victorians were fond of them it would be nice if they came back in popularity for cooking uh, they do seem to be quite quite a good variety some people say you have to really watch it and make sure that you bleck them that is ripen them pick them before they're totally soft some people say to pick them at the first frosts in early November and other people say you can pick them slightly earlier and let them ripen but early to mid November seems about right to me if I take the lighting down a little bit and improve the contrast on this um, times 20 of the Nottingham Meddler, you can see how um, bizarre it looks um, inside the actual fruit, what I think it's known as the calyx of the fruit. And basically, you can see it is quite, quite sort of a hairy thing. It looks kind of uh, very fibrous inside. And no doubt the pulp of um, quince itself it has a lot of uses. It's obviously very high in fiber, and basically that that is, that is of interest to nutritionists. Um, it seems to be fairly low sugar. I've discovered that the quince canellamies, the other variety, is extremely low in sugar, and that in itself is makes it a very healthy fruit. It is rich in vitamins and antioxidants, so very useful nutritionally. Here we have quince canellamies, which is a Japanese variety of quince and that's what their seeds look like. You can plant them out now, which is winter in the UK, late December. As long as you put a cover over the plant pot, they can be left outside. Make sure that the compost doesn't go mouldy. If you have a nice sunny day, you can always take the cover off for that day to let the sunshine get on. That can kill off any mould which might be on the top of the compost. And keep an eye, see if they do sprout. They will not grow true to their parent. That's a problem with seeds, and this is why people take cuttings, as I have done. Of course, it's probably easier to grow the low-growing variety, the Japanese quince canelamies. And once you split these open, be take care you, if you use a serrated knife, and these are softened somewhat. Um, you should be able to get plenty of seeds out of these, and they look like so. And they're much much darker seed. I don't know what the viability is like to grow from seed, so I'm going to try that over the winter and I'll report back to you. But that's the um, canelamese seed, sort of a teardrop shape, isn't it? Here you can see them at times 20. This is the teardrop shape of a canelamese seed, or uh, quince, Japanese quince. Under, uh, my, my, under my breast microscope, USB microscope. Always handy for having a look at these things. And wonder, wonder of nature, I think, seeds are fantastic and interesting in their own right. Of course, if you want to grow other varieties that you find in hedgerows, um, such as mirabelles or blackthorn sloes or damsons, which are very interesting, you'll find that they will produce stones and you are going to have to crack open the stones with your nutcracker or your vice if it's tougher and you end up with these type of seeds here so and you can put them in your separate little containers and label them up and plant them I'm not going to say that all of them are viable or they're all going to grow and you can buy seeds online and here's an example of something that which I have successfully grown some seeds from and these are crab apples and the birds love them and I've also used these for simple recipes myself for cooking um, I have seen online that people have recommended using apples or crab apples together with these um, meddlers, such as no uh, Nottingham meddler. Yeah, I might be able to see a bit, bit, bit better with an extra light on it. So um, the two of them apparently work well together. You'd have to cook them for half an hour. They sort of turn into a puree. Um, 
and then filter them through a muslin filter and it makes a sort of a jelly so that's an interesting recipe isn't it medlar and crab apple jelly apparently it's set but there you go worth a try so I'll leave you with this the strange hairy fruit that is the Nottingham medlar what a mysterious plant this is but well worth growing and of course even better it's edible if treated right I believe most people do cook it though some people claim if it's exceptionally ripe but not mouldy of course that it is edible I tasted a tiny bit myself I don't know I think I prefer to cook it with the apple and the recipe that people um, some people have put online so see what you think have a go get a hold of some seeds online to have a go at growing it yourself if you don't want to buy an actual tree do what I do and start from scratch apparently some people claim you can get fruit from it in as early as three years 